right, I've had some requests to look at Margot Robbie, an Australian actress who has become quite uh, well-known lately for having played Harley Quinn in The Suicide Squad, which is a role with very uh, distracting costume, makeup and so forth. But if you look past, uh, it does seem like we've got quite a broad skull, definite brow ridges. Some Caucasian women do have brow ridges, but also we've got a long forehead. And let's keep looking. Cute child. It's not strikingly effeminate or strikingly masculine. Here I do feel like it looks quite masculine. There's some um, facial structures strong, all the features are very spaced, the, the face is very broad, which is more common on males. Very large forehead. Now, I do notice also that this person seems to have fairly bony knees. Um, most women have kind of smoother knees because of a higher level of subcutaneous body fat. Again, the features are very uh, broad and quite pronounced on a large skull, and it does seem like we have a pretty thick neck and trachea. It's not a very bony person, though. Here, it doesn't look like there's much curve to the thighs. And here is a very telling image with the bony knees, comparatively thinner male ankles, and straight thighs without a female cue angle. This looks like a male cue angle. The shoulders are quite square in shape. Some females have square shoulders, but the majority have more of a slope to the shoulder. I think it does look like we might be able to fit three head widths on these shoulders. Now as for the hips, uh, with this attire it's all baggy around this area, so it's a little bit hard to judge the hip width. But it does look like they're about equal to the shoulders. They're not. It's not an extreme difference, at least in this shot, so we'll keep looking. This person is really exuding male energy. This is not this is not a soft female gaze. It's rather focused, even though the expression is very kind of calm and serene. It's it comes off it comes off looking pretty male. There's those brow ridges, prominent cheekbones, strong square chin, square jaw that goes far back. The nose is small, rhinoplasty is one of the most popular procedures. Um, the, the lips are very full, but what we do notice is that the upper lip is significantly smaller in size than the lower lip, and usually females will have lips about the same size, so uh, males will have the upper lip a little bit smaller than the lower. There is quite a focus in the eyes, more focused energy, which is what we see on males. Forehead is very long. Again, the nose is small and refined, it could be rhinoplasty. Some males do just naturally have small noses. Again, the lips are full, especially the lower lip and the upper lip, not so much. Very square chin, very strong, broad jaw. And this person is very soft looking. You don't see any um, jutting of bones or anything. So I can see, I can see how this one could be a little tricky. So far I'm getting male vibes from the person, and it doesn't seem quite right. There is that very square jaw, wide dental arch, wide spaced eyes, very prominent brow ridges. This is... this is not a female skull. There, there are females with strong facial structures, but this is just... It, it's a step too far. Again, a really hefty jaw, hefty skull, quite a long looking neck. Uh, it does look like the hands are fairly large. It does look like we probably have a male digit ratio, with the index finger being shorter than the ring. Again, this trait is not 100%. Now, the hand is closer to the camera, so we have to be aware of that, but it also does look very large. Again, that jaw looks to be very, very square and sturdy. Prominent brow ridges. Again, it's not really bony, it's not really muscular. It's um, quite a solid person, but now with the hand actually on the face, the hand is being curved, so we can't really judge the digit ratio, but I would say it's probably about equal. 
uh, square fingertips like this. There are some women who have fingers like this, but I usually don't see them. I usually see that women have more kind of tapered fingertips. If we imagine taking this hand from where the palm curves and putting it upward onto the chin, this hand would go really quite high on the face indeed, which is more indicative of a male hand, because male hands reach higher on the face on their own skull than female hands do on their own skull. It does seem like some development in the trachea, but when people are laughing and talking and moving around, sometimes these things stand out more even on real females, so... Now again, this person doesn't have really jutting bones or anything, but this figure is not female. The shoulders are very square. Again, some women can have more square shoulders, but when all of these traits are in conjunction with other ones that don't fit, that's when it starts to be a problem. So the shoulders are square. It does look like we could probably fit three skull sizes on the shoulders. The rib cage is really big. The torso just looks very um, solid and kind of square. The widest part of the hips is only up here. Down here it looks like a bit of um, spare flesh on a narrower pelvis. Doesn't, it's not a gradual, smooth curve, it's just, it's suddenly there, and then suddenly not. So it looks like that's either developed through taking estrogen, or through fat contouring. But if we look at where the actual bones in the pelvis likely are, they may be just a little bit narrower than the shoulders, but the pelvis doesn't really look wide enough to be female. On some prepubescent male to female transgenders, the torso length stays fairly short and the spine stays quite um, flexible, so if they practice and maintain flexibility, then uh, it's easier for them to arch the back and try and approximate a female figure. And here, we can see that the person is pulling the spine backward, and then the leg is stepping forward, so this person is twisting in this photo. It does look like there's a little bit of a bend, but it's actually not, it's not correct for a female. Again, the torso isn't really long, it's actually fairly short on this person. The legs don't look very feminine. It does look like there's some curve to the abdomen, but down here there doesn't seem to be much curve to the lower back. It's mostly, there's just kind of the bending going on in the spine, but down here it's quite straight. So it looks like a curved abdomen, but the actual pelvis doesn't seem to be properly tilted in the way that it should be. This whole section here appears kind of ungainly, a bit strange, which suggests that even though this person is of a quite a sort of slim average body size, the bones aren't right near the surface, which would be very strange on a female, because obviously, naturally, your body uh, should be growing flesh right by the bones. Um, on females, the bones are more expanded than what we seem to be seeing here. Looks like this is just kind of... Um, loose and not immediately a top bone. The knees do seem pretty um, bony. The ribcage looks pretty big. The wrists don't really seem to taper much. There's just a fairly thin forearm all the way down, creating kind of a rectangular look. Whereas on females, there tends to be more of a taper. Again, the bones don't stick out too much. As I've said in other videos, um, with some of the modern MTF types, they do seem to just be pretty soft and, and not quite as obvious. They'll keep a little bit of body fat and it'll hide the bones. Now in this photo, we have this leg being the one with all the weight on it. So the back is being pushed out a little bit on this side, which creates the illusion of the curve, as well as the fact that this person is kind of slouching the shoulders forward a bit. And as I've mentioned in other videos, when they do this, when some MTFs do this, it creates a big kind of um, hunch, uh, a bend on the back, and yet they still have a big rib cage up front. But with real females, the back is flatter. It's not as um, hefty. So with real females, if they just stand straight without slouching, then they have the curve in the spine. But on someone like this, they have to create that through um, through some slouching and through some pushing up the hindquarters. It does look like the person's body is really quite straight. Um, 
the front of the body looks straight. It doesn't look like we have a proper pelvic tilt. The curve in the back is low. The feet do look pretty big, and there is quite a narrowness to the ankle, whereas on females, there's generally more of a gradual curve uh, because of higher subcutaneous body fat levels. Now, compare this photo to the last one and find that uh, there's no posing going on with the lower back. So what we can see is that it seems to be really quite straight. It does come inward a little bit, but then it doesn't come back outward. It's just a very kind of flat posterior, lean looking legs. Doesn't look like we've got any kind of curve going onto the hips and the pelvis. They look quite narrow. Well, on the other hand, the back the ribcage looks very, very big. Again, the pretty square shoulders probably could fit three head sizes. Very square chin, square jaw. This person is a self-proclaimed fan of um, either metal or hard rock, I've forgotten which one they said. So maybe this is just an indication of that, or maybe it's kind of an indication of being involved in the agenda. Either way, hand signs like this are not an indication that someone is transgendered. Only their skeletal structure will tell us that. Just a little reminder to be logical. Um, but what we can see here is prominent cheekbones, prominent jaw, looks like a wide dental arch, wide spaced eyes, long forehead. Again, this person doesn't have an extremely narrow looking pelvis. It's fairly matched up to the shoulders, which are very wide. But because the arms do seem to hang down straight at the shoulders, it does indicate that the pelvis is probably just a little bit narrower. Very sharp, cut-looking jaw, which is unusual for a woman because, I mean, especially for this kind of person, where they don't seem to have many jutting bones like in the in the chest and things, on a woman like that, you wouldn't have this sharp of a jawline because that would mean her subcutaneous body fat levels would be, you know, normal for a female. And on normal females, they tend to have softness around the face here on the jaw. But on males, they don't. So, again, very square jaw. Again, there's not really anything strange going on in the neck. There's not really anything strange going on with the bones. The facial features are very telling still, but faces can be confusing. Sometimes people will transvestigate only based on a skull and then they'll be wrong because the real important markers are the primary skeletal traits related to the ability to bear children or not. So, now here it does look like we've got a narrower pelvis. The legs do seem to be quite close together, which means they spring out of the pelvis at a closer a point. While on females, they'll come out of the pelvis uh, from the joints at a wider point, and so they'll have more of, a, of an acute Q-angle, but here it does look like the Q-angle is just pretty... it's pretty straight and male. The legs step more side by side. Males tend to straddle the line, females tend to walk one foot after the other just as a result of the Q-angles being as they are. Again, we have here feet walking side by side, legs looking very straight. There's not really space here in the pelvis. It appears like the legs do spring out from a close point. And then we've just got on the outside a kind of strange looking curve. It doesn't look quite natural to me. Even with that kind of strange curve, and even though the legs are quite long, it does seem like the mass of the person tends to be more up here, in the torso, in the shoulders. Again, very masculine looking skull. Shoulders too broad. As for the arm length, crotch level seems to be about to the wrist, which is more common on males than on females. The arm doesn't angle out really far, and it doesn't hang straight down, but because these hips appear to be built up, the arms would require to hang out a little bit in order to uh, accommodate them. The thing is, they don't look quite natural. Again, feet stepping side by side, more masculine looking knees, very straight looking legs. This is not a female Q angle. Square shoulders, again, uh, doing that MTF trick where they lean the upper part of the back backward and then also shrug the shoulders forward. So they create that kind of hunch in the back, which is attempting to approximate a female spinal arch. And then on the lower body, it does appear like we've got very straight lines. This isn't a proper female curve. 
wide dental arch, wide jaw, long forehead, brow ridges, wide spaced eyes. And see here, that is a very, very straight, straight torso. There is not the proper female pelvic tilt there. Looks like the back is really quite straight. And then just the male posterior. Again, all the skull traits as mentioned. And again, this is quite a focused energy. Prominent brow ridges. Quite small ears. Again, some men have small ears. Actually, the ears and the nose are both small, so they may just be naturally small. Because they tend to be the same size on people. I have noticed also that uh, men tend to have more lines like this, uh, folds of skin on the neck when they turn. This is generally an indication of having a lower level of subcutaneous body fat, so typically women will have fewer folds of skin when they turn and in other places when they uh, bend and move. Okay, we're seeing it now. You can tell that the pelvis itself is not as large as the hips, uh, the fat on the hips on top of it. So it appears that the pelvis is probably about this size in here, which is definitely smaller than the shoulders. Uh, this curve looks very unnatural. It, uh, the curve is only up here, and while females should have curve up here, the fact that it's not also below the crotch, there should be a gradual curve coming down and being fullest below the crotch. But instead we have some flesh built up by estrogen on the hips and then also on the legs. But the legs themselves look like they've got a male cue angle. And it looks like the pelvis is long and narrow. The torso really does look big, kind of big rib cage. And here again, this is definitely an indication of a male pelvis. The estrogen treatments have given this person fat gain up here. But then there's not any down here. On a real female, you would have uh, the kind of high waist indentation and then the curve gradually coming down until the widest point would be right about here, which would be just below the crotch. But instead we have a clear indication that this is a narrow pelvis inside of here. That the bones come down straight, very male looking posterior. So basically, um, you just kind of ignore what the estrogen has done on the outside edges of the hips here then you can tell that we've got the shoulders and then the body should naturally come down sort of um straighter like that again this person seems to be one of the prepubescent transgenders that uh reacted well with the hormone blockers so the torso isn't really long this is also it also can be influenced by genetics there are some areas uh, around, you know, some parts of Switzerland, Austria, Germany, where I've seen men who do have fairly short torsos and really long legs. It might be some kind of natural adaptation that developed over time because of living in uh, really kind of hilly, mountainous regions. It's just a possibility, but, um, but it also is noteworthy that sometimes prepubescent MTFs will have shorter torsos and more flexible bones because they don't uh, go through male maturation and experience the thickening of all of the bones to provide greater um, density, as in males that do mature. I've also mentioned this in some other videos, that um, sometimes there will be a lot of photos of MTFs from this sort of three-quarter angle, because it maximizes the appearance of the male hip. But what's interesting is that there's not actual roundness to the hip, it's just um, more of an incline on MTFs from this angle. And then you can also tell that the Q angle begins at a high point, rather than there being a fullness and a curve down lower. His legs look very just lean and long, the torso is straight, there's not pelvic tilt. Again, it looks like the pelvis is pretty narrow. When the person has a little bit less fat, then they appear instantly less feminine, because we can make out the actual bone structure. Looks like there's not a really wide pelvis, looks like we've got a male Q angle, big torso. And here, I mean, this tells all that straight back, straight front, there is no pelvic tilt there. The mass all appears to be up here, in the rib cage, in the shoulders, 
it's hefty up top and gets thinner down low. Same here. Bigger rib cage, a uh, straight body, there's no curving, no proper hips, no proper curve on the thighs, the pelvis does appear to be small. Not a biological female. Kind of interesting energy here. Very prominent brow ridges. The brow isn't really sloped, but as I say all the time, sloping brows are not found on every male skull. Brow ridges typically are, but the shape of the skull itself is not always the same. Different regions of the world have different genetic um, variation. But generally, someone with this large of a brow ridge and with uh, this many other facial bones that are so strong generally doesn't look very female. See how unnatural these hips are. That's just, that is not a female shape. Because the ribcage is so large, there's not actually space on the torso for the hips to be built up as they are. It ends up looking very, ends up looking very strange and unnatural. And we can clearly tell that where the uh, thigh bones are connecting in with the pelvis is above the crotch, meaning it's a male Q angle. With female legs, they should be, the widest point should be below the crotch, and the Q-angle begins from that point. So this person does have a few traits that are a little more convincing, but taking into account the most important traits, which are the traits related to childbearing, which are the spine and whether it has any degree of a spinal arch to it, which begins at the right place, and uh, whether they have the acute female Q-angle. These two traits are very important, as well as the hip-to-shoulder ratio. Uh, that one that one almost matched on this person, but because the spinal arch is not correct and the pelvis shape, most of all, is not correct, uh, meaning the Q-angle also is not correct, this person, in my opinion, is an MTF transgender. And that's that.